a while since I've done a video, but today, of course, it's beautiful weather outside, and I want to do uh, another barbecue thing. Uh, I'm going to be using my bubble keg and a couple of other inventions that I didn't invent, of course. Uh, I'm going to do some beer can chickens, if you can see. This one over here, I've, I've already used. I like it. Uh, it works pretty well. This is a new one that I'm going to give a shot. I saw it, and I wanted to try it. You just put the can in there, apparently, and it holds it down, and the chicken just rests. But the other main thing I'm going to use is this CyberQ. Uh, this is my new toy. Very expensive little toy, but uh, I'm going to see if it works. Uh, because I've seen a couple of videos that look pretty good. And it has an adapter for my bubble keg or my big steel keg, whichever you want to, you want to call it. And I want to give it a shot. They have a lot of different uh, adapters for different grills. So it's not set up yet. I have set up the Wi-Fi just because I wanted to see how it works and went to the web page. Uh, I'm not going to go through, of course, the unboxing. It's already unboxed, as you can see. So, you know, I don't want to waste my time on that. There's already plenty of videos of unboxing. You're going to get a good box. You're going to get a good package. It's going to come. Um, so I have plugged it up to see if it works. That was my main thing. Uh, I just have to configure it and hook it up to the grill now. Um, and I'm going to try a little bit of diffusing um, until I actually buy one. I just kind of jury rigged one. So we'll see what happens with my beer can chicken. And I'll be back when I get ready to get to that point. Now that I have it all connected, following the simple guys you see online or in the book, uh, I'll do a quick overview just so you can see what I did do, the final results um, as far as the hookups. So uh, I had to put this plate in. Now the video makes it look really easy and maybe it's because it's already used but mine um, has a bend to it so I had to actually bend the plate a little bit to make it work for me. Uh, the spacer here is there so that it can go up some in the lip. So it's there and it's holding, uh, I slid this over. You saw it before with nothing connected. I basically pulled the plug out, tucked the fan, and inserted the fan. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, air vent here, over here is open. You see the little design, it means that airflow. If you push it all the way through to the other side, it cuts the uh, airflow off. You can hear the fan, you probably can't see it spinning. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I have three temperature probes in right now. Okay, I just put the chicken in. Uh, I have one on the tree here, which um, I need to pull over just a little bit. Okay, because I don't want it touching the metal. Uh, I bought one of those little trees because I was curious if it works. So it's another piece. So it's gonna measure my pit temp. The other ones, of course, are in the chicken and the thigh. Okay, the beeping sound is saying that, oh, the temperature is low. So here is a little uh, device here. Cook temple is low. I have it set to 300. Okay, stop the beeping. All right, lets me know that the food number three is the other probe, which is not connected. Okay, the temperature is 213. And the food, of course, you see, uh, it's, it's, I just put it in, so you're talking about um, 71 for that one, 79 for the other. They're both together. Okay, now you hear the fan kick in. Okay, now it's going to get the temp back up to 300-ish. My other piece is to find out how accurate this is. Uh, I know it measures the temperature up in the top part of the keg, but not so much down at the where the actual uh, fire in the pit is. So this is also a test to figure out uh, if it's more accurate. So real quick with this, I switched real quick. I think that probably just messed some of you guys' TV up or phone from widescreen to uh, normal. I keep forgetting to flip that over, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anybody. You still can see it. Uh, so once you set everything up, again, the manual is pretty straightforward if you use a manual. Okay. There's also another quick start guide that comes with it because if you buy one, you will see that. Also, they have pretty good videos online that are actually uh, tutorials that walk you through it if you really can't uh, figure it out. So I won't go in detail of that. 
But just to show you this, once everything is connected and you're set up to the uh, what they call infrastructure mode, which is basically um, once you set it up in the in the cloud, there uh, you're gonna be able to go to sharemycook.com, register your device, hook everything up, and you'll see it. So what I want to do right now, I'm just gonna skip to this real quick before I forget. So I put one hour because I want to put one hour on the timer so that I can go back and check it in about an hour until I get used to how this thing works. Okay, so now I'm on my tablet there so I can't really show you what I want to show you but hopefully you can see it. Uh, they also go over this pretty well but I'll just show you. Pretty simple. Cook your, your current status is what I'm looking at. You can also set up the Wi-Fi from here. You can do your control uh, set up from here. I won't go into a lot of detail of that. You can find that out when you go into the manual. Uh, but there's a lot of little cool little features in here um, as far as cooking holds. So right now, for instance, 200 degrees, once it gets to the temp that I want, it will continue to hold it at 200 degrees once the food is done. Um, my timeout action sets for hold. There's different settings in there to do other things with like alarm and alert and all these other things. But I'm just keeping it at default right now until I get used to how everything else works. Okay. All right. Um, the open direct, because most of the things that they feel that are necessary for you to start with are already set up and checked. And that's what I'm going with as my default for now until I get used to it. And then I'll start going to the advanced stuff because there's a lot more advanced features in here. Okay. Uh, you can also do this stuff from the device itself. And if you get one, you'll, you'll see that. Okay. Hotspot setups is how you do it from your... Uh, when you're setting it up in the beginning main menu here this is what I really focused on um, because you can share this with other people as well and they can see it you could be somewhere else which I thought was cool uh, or if you're cooking something really long you can have this going and just watch it you can also control the temperature from here so I have it set for 300 that's why it's going to 300 okay you should little graph over there and my uh, internal temp for the chicken right now, I want it first at 165 and to let me know. You see the. Okay, so this is what I wanted to talk about. Um, that's probably not mentioned much yet about the, the guru. Um, so once everything is set up and you set your account up with Share My Cook, you set up your device and everything up, you'll get uh, access to this site. It's pretty cool. Uh, this is where you can actually come in and look at everything from the internet no matter where you are and check on your stuff and uh, on your cooking and everything else so once you've created a cook you'll see some um, I'll get there in a minute but you'll be able to see the graph on what's going on uh, you can add your own special recipes if you want update your profile of course set your alerts uh, add your own grill that you have uh, with the alerts basically you're just gonna go on there and you can set up email alerts or SMS to let you know when your food is ready or however you have your your timer set okay I don't currently have it set up right now to let me know um, my SMS I'll work on that later but the email it is set up and it'll let me know that hey uh, food was done uh, in here you're all you'll be used to once you set it up where your device and everything is okay and this is how you set everything up okay all right, so my device, manage the device. We're gonna look at this really quick. We saw this earlier, but this shows you what's going on. So no matter where I am, I can pull this up, okay? And it lets me know. I'm gonna set this timer here for 30 minutes. And then I'll go back out there and check it again. Uh, the fan is kicking in 34%. It's trying to keep up the temperature to 300 degrees. Uh, and it's almost done, actually. Right now, I have it set to 165. Um, the I moved it earlier from my thigh to one area to to the breast to make sure it was cooked on both sides. So it looks like it's uh, almost there. But before it gets there, I want you to see these little little neat little things. It lets you know when you hover over them what's going on, just in case. Now, view my cook. 
the view might cook is this area right here that says create a cook I created a cook and it basically says that I'm gonna cook this this is the grill I'm gonna use this is an advice and you can put your uh, recipe and all these other things in there and share your pictures with everybody so I already created mine so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna click on um, manage devices again and then I'm gonna go ver uh, view current cook so this brings up this location here with the graph and then you can see all the information right here details you can put your little notes in if you wanted to I can go back into the manage if I need to adjust my temperature or stop the recording if I'm finished so all my gauges here's my pit temp here's my food one my food two and a cool little graph and as you see I dropped here because I went outside and opened up the lid of course, so the temperature dropped, and now we brought it back up to 300 again. And it keeps a pretty steady temperature, actually. It does very good at keeping a steady temperature. Uh, of course, this is the food probe. It dropped also because I pulled it out and put it in a different location. So it came back up. And you can download this stuff if you need to, just so you can keep it. I will probably add some pictures later of how it turned out. <laughs> Provided that it turned out good and I didn't mess it up by messing around doing videos instead of watching my food but this is one reason why I got this so I don't have to watch it as much because I'm always doing something else uh, let's see what the cook details are Even, okay this is what I put in earlier the weather temperature uh, outside and the fan percentage I'm cooking whole chicken in the backyard I'm in Germany and here's my graph okay that's pretty cool that's what I liked about it and the fact that this I can bring up on my TV as well uh, which I have and um, it basically shows the exact same screen but bigger so that I could be walking around and see it. So just to show you really quick, uh, I set the same, went to the same link on my uh, TV, on my smart TV, uh, using one of my other devices to go to the internet and as you can see, it shows it all right there, same thing. So when I'm walking by, because I'm cleaning or doing other cooking or something else in the, in the house, I can see that and be like, oh, okay, let me go out here and, and check this. Uh, if I don't have an alert set up on my, on my uh, phone or my email to let me know that, hey, the food is done or check the food, my TV works just fine. I'm a gadget guy, so I think this is kind of cool. So this is one of the reasons that I uh, invested in getting it because I wanted to check it out. And I will probably be doing more cooking with this.